This is David Hofmeister's Unwind Your Mind Back to God, read by Tarana Singh. In today's episode, we continue unlearning the world with Book 2. In Chapter 1, this is Section 8. A Question of Vigilance Can the Ego Be Vigilant? Friend, there is a sentence in the text that says, By deciding against your reality, you have made yourself vigilant against God and His kingdom. And it is this vigilance that makes you afraid to remember Him. Text chapter 10, section 2 What kind of vigilance is this? Can the ego be vigilant? David that is a really good good question. Let's look at this. In the course, Jesus says to be vigilant until you no longer need to be vigilant. But the vigilance in this sentence you are asking about is a different quality of vigilance. Vigilance is of the ego, as the perceptual realm is of the ego but it can be used by the Holy Spirit for the purpose of attentiveness. Yet, this is a different context being expressed here in the quote you gave. Let's take a look at it. By deciding against reality, you have made yourself vigilant against God and His kingdom. What he means is that you will do anything to deny God's reality and uphold your own, being vigilant for your own perceived reality. Deciding is of the self-concept. Only the split mind believes in choice or decision. For example, the belief that there is a country called America or Canada, is a concept. I am a Canadian. I am an American. I am an African American. I am British. I am Australian. All of these are concepts and we find ourselves defending them because we believe this is who we are. We believe we have a choice to be who we want to be. We are very vigilant in protecting what we have made. Do you see how complex this I know mind is? What am I not? I am not Canadian. I am not born in a body. I am not the perception. Jesus speaks of this in the book of John. When the Jews asked him how he could not even be 50 years old yet, and still claimed to have seen Abraham, Jesus told them, Before Abraham was, I am. Jesus is telling us that before Abraham was, I am. There is nothing that comes after I am. I am not the name speaker. I am not the Citizenship of the country the body was born in. The Christ is not a label, nor is it a part of time and space. Every time you are upset and you think you know something, it means you want to be right. When you are defending your illusion over God's reality, you are being vigilant against God and His kingdom. And it is this vigilance that makes you afraid to remember him. Text chapter 10, section 2 That is the key. Because we believe that we really have separated, now we are afraid that we have done something wrong by pretending that we know something other than God's knowledge, which is changeless, eternal love. 
By pretending that the separation is real, we become fearful of remembering God because we really believe in the impossible. This kind of vigilance is the ego's vigilance, the vigilance of defending illusions. One can only be vigilant in the perceptual realm. Be vigilant for the kingdom because the mind is very resistant. The egoic mind is vigilant for idols. Be vigilant in exposing of the idols. The calm being of God's kingdom which in your sane mind is perfectly con- conscious, is ruthlessly banished from the part of the mind the ego rules. The ego is desperate because it opposes literally invincible odds, whether you are asleep or awake. Consider how much vigilance you have been willing to exert to protect your ego and how little to protect your right mind. Who but the insane would undertake to believe what is not true and then protect this belief at the cost of truth? Text Chapter 4 Section 3 What you have made is false knowledge and the split mind is very vigilant in keeping it. This is what maintains the world seemingly in its chaotic state, thinking that we know something. In fact, we cannot know anything in the perceptual realm. Right-mindedness is the correction of this wrong-minded attempt to order one's reality. Right-mindedness is not to be confused with the knowing mind, God's knowledge, because it is applicable only to right perception. That is why in the early workbook Jesus says, You do not know what anything is for. Workbook Lesson 25 You think you know what a telephone is for, but only at the most superficial level. We have to be open to the thought that I do not know anything because I am attempting to decide reality for myself and this is why I am afraid. Because every time I attempt to make reality for myself, I am misusing the law of the kingdom, the law of love. This attempt to decide reality is why guilt arises in awareness. There is a sense of knowingness that the mind is not being used for the purposes of creation but to make illusions. This results in fear because we believe the illusions to be real and we will do anything to protect them. The ego is very vigilant against God and his kingdom. In order to be clear on the idea of vigilance, we must first look at the Holy Spirit's purpose for vigilance and the ego's idea of vigilance. There seem to be two alternatives two choices. Out of all the choices in the world, all of the decisions that one could possibly make, this narrows it down to just two. There is a great simplification in this. Let's say these two choices are the potential solutions to any seeming problem. The first solution is to unmask the ego. The second solution is to continue in the state of achieving, becoming and seeking for surface level changes. 
The former solution is to unmask and unravel the ego and its schemes to save itself. The latter entails a continuance of seeking for a better illusion, seeking for salvation where it cannot be found, a continuation of the rat race. The first choice will take effort, but it is like unraveling a ball of yarn which has an eventual end. The second choice also requires effort, but in this effort it perpetuates all sorts of suffering. Although both require effort and vigilance, we can say that because of the outcome, only one of these choices is a real alternative. Only one leads to the kingdom. Friend, that must mean I really have no choice to be what I want to be. So there is really no choice at all? David, if there is one choice, then there must be no choice, because choice implies two or more. If there is only one real choice that leads to reality, then there is no choice. The choice for the right mind is really just a choice to have the Holy Spirit decide for you. One really never had a choice, but an illusion of choice. But this is too simple for the ego. The ego needs something to be for or against, or it will cease to exist. The ego uses concepts, ideas and beliefs. It attaches itself to these ideas and then thinks that this is who it is. I am an American. I am Catholic. I am Buddhist. I am this and I am that and I am Christian. I know, I know, I know. It gets lost in the I know which is really just a defense against the memory of knowledge that is available in the holy instant. The holy instant is where knowledge is reflected and where love is remembered. It is where we meet the Holy Spirit, in the present moment, right now. The Course tells us, to teach the whole sonship without exception demonstrates that you perceive its wholeness and have learned that it is one. Now you must be vigilant to hold its oneness in your mind because if you let doubt enter, you will lose awareness of its wholeness and will be unable to teach it. The wholeness of the kingdom does not depend on your perception, but your awareness of its wholeness does. It is only your awareness that needs protection, since being cannot be assailed. Yet a real sense of being cannot be yours while you are doubtful of what you are. This is why vigilance is essential. Doubts about being must not enter your mind, or you cannot know what you are with certainty. Certainty is of God for you. Vigilance is not necessary for truth, but it is necessary against illusions. Text chapter 6, section 5